Welcome back to my negative corner of the internet where I talk about controversial things that people on TikTok tag me in or just message me to talk about because they find them interesting. I will put my handle in the description of this video if you want to tag me in something, if you want to follow me. It's a little boring over there. I'm not even going to lie. Um, but yeah, go ahead and send me some stuff. For my informational videos, I did change the format to crafts because once again, I said this in the last video, I'll say it again because it's been two weeks, more on that in a second. It just makes it easier for me to do a voiceover. It's also easier for Jen to edit. You will be meeting her soon within the next couple months, so I'm pretty excited. I just gift all of my crafts. This one is for my mom's birthday, which is at the end of this month. We're actually going to talk about her here real quick before I get into it. I did tell her not to start watching my videos, and then she ended up in the ICU, so I guess she's not going to watch them. She did end up getting COVID-19. Uh, she's already very immune compromised from anti-rejection medication, which is something that people take when they get a transplant of mostly any kind, from my understanding. I will talk more in depth about that the month after next month. She, yeah, so she's immune compromised from her anti-rejection meds. She's, her kidneys are failing. She needs another transplant, which they're only supposed to last about seven years. It's been over 10, I want to say. I think 2007 is when she got hers. And she's just overall unhealthy because of her type 1 diabetes that she's had since, like, probably her entire life. But from what I understand, since she was diagnosed at 16. And, yeah, we got a call last Wednesday... So yeah, well, no, would that be last Wednesday for you? Yeah, I think it would be last Wednesday for you that she was in critical condition. And so we flew out there, everybody, just to find out it was a miscommunication. She was doing very bad. Yes, uh, but it wasn't critical at that point. She did have a couple slips here and there. I've been calling the hospital like twice a night, twice a day, probably driving them crazy. But they're all very, very understanding and they do their best to explain things as in-depth as possible. So, fingers crossed that she continues on a positive road of recovery. I can't wait. I'm going to actually bring her this gift on Monday when I go all the way out there again to see her. So, I'll let you know. I'll let you know. This did kind of mess it up. Thanks, Mom. Because this video is now a week late. I'm trying to be more consistent. I know it's only like 10 views here and there. But I do. It is people that send it to me and so I say hey I'll cover this in this month and then it's like no next month and then it's this this isn't my job this isn't something I do full-time nor I want to do full-time it's more for fun and so obviously my actual job and my business have to take precedence over this so sorry to wrap up the topic of this month March we're talking about alternative approaches to zero tolerance policies and their punishments I will link the other three videos on this topic if you want to know the start, events, and mental health that goes into this topic on a smaller scale. As usual, any source that I used, which is always based on a study done by an organization, governmental, or educational entity, and not like americabuzz.com or some weird-ass site, will be linked in the description below along with EJ Robinson's Spotify. What is an alternative action? It's obviously something else that we can do besides what we're doing now. So some of those, as far as the school to prison pipeline, and again, if you haven't watched the videos before, go watch those because I kind of like broke the topic way down as I always do. And it's, it tells you in the title what that part is. So <laughs> if you don't know what I'm talking about, go watch part one and then go to two, three, and then come back here. So number one, targets behavioral support for at-risk students. So these include programs like First Step to Success, Cognitive Behavioral Training Program for Behaviorally Disordered Adolescents and School-Based Intervention to Reduce Aggressive Behavior in Maladjusted Adolescents. All of these programs have exercises that help students listen, manage their anger, resolve conflict, and other basic social skills. This also allows at-risk students to be observed on a smaller scale instead of being part of a large group of varying students with varying abilities. If you do want to know more about these programs, you can check out the study. It'll be the first thing linked in the description below, but the best part of these is that they can be done in school, like during the school day. For CBT-based classes, these could be used in place of a study hall, which have, let's be honest, don't mean anything or really help many people, 
where a kid might have the most trouble staying still or quiet for 35 to 40 minutes. Study halls for me, it was just like, hey, let's go mess around in this class. Number two, character education and social emotional learning programs. Character education programs are defined as, quote, programs that deliberately attempt to develop students' character by teaching core values and that had most, if not all, of their lesson plans or prescribed activities directly related to instilling those values, unquote. Social-emotional learning is defined as, quote again, the process through which children and adults acquire the knowledge, attitudes, and skills to recognize and manage their emotions, set and achieve positive goals, demonstrate caring and concern for others, establish and maintain positive relationships, make responsible decisions, and handle interpersonal situations effectively. Again, if you want to know more, it's linked below. If I were to tell you everything about all of these programs, this video would be more than the 15 minutes that I try to make most of my videos, and we just don't have time for that. There's also school-wide positive behavioral intervention and support, or SWPBIS. So more than 13,000 schools have taken part in this initiative. Rather than using the punishments outlined in zero tolerance policies, this is a tier-based intervention system. Tier one is about defining and teaching behavioral expectations and rewarding positive behavior. The second tier is for at-risk students and has targeted interventions that are consistent with the school-wide behavioral expectations. Lastly, the third tier is for children who have more serious issues relating to behavior and not only includes intervention from parents and the community, but also individualized one-on-one -on -one support. All of these programs have been tested and are already in use by thousands of schools, and the results are highly positive. They can all work together as well as just work individually, but they can all take place within the school system itself. Imagine the money that would be saved, like worldwide, well not worldwide, but countrywide, because we're talking about the United States, if instead of sending kids to outside resources like out of school suspension or juvenile courts, we instead funneled that money into hiring more counselors and educating teachers and teaching staff on these programs that I've just highlighted. And on top of that, they have positive outcomes from it. As in, like, I don't know why the math ain't math and for everybody else. Let's play devil's advocate for a minute because these last few videos, I've just kind of spent demonizing zero tolerance policies. But to some people who stand for them, they might think they are making schools safer. They might think that certain types of violence are being held at bay, even though I've shown you in the last three videos that that's not really the case. Zero tolerance policies are founded on the idea that showing all behaviors seen as wrong are unacceptable will lead to them just not happening, but they are happening and they are happening at a higher rate than before. Other alternative approaches include restorative justice, which is basically where the victim and the perpetrator meet up in a safe environment and discuss the event that happened from both perspectives, and then decide as a collective what can happen going forward to not only make amends, but to prevent this from happening again. I know that this sounds like, to a specific group of far right-leaning people, a snowflake safe place meeting area, bleh, and yeah, absolutely that's what it is. It's about the perpetrator accepting responsibility for what they did. And to be completely honest, because I've had these conversations with my conservative friends and I know what certain people will say, I want you to hear this, okay? If you are someone who prides yourself on not only your patriotism, but also your Christianity, restorative justice is 100% based in Christian morals. Restorative justice isn't about punishing evil, it's about helping the vulnerable. And hello. I'm not even going to go on a rant about that because that is for a later topic that I'm actually really happy someone else brought up. So just, just keep that little tidbit in mind. Restorative justice keeps students in school and allows them to be part of the punishment rather just an unwilling participant in the punishment. One thing to point out that has worked in one particular county is the Clayton County model created by a juvenile court judge based out of Clayton County, Georgia. 
I'll link that below as well, but basically it's a collaboration between schools, courts, and law enforcement that helps define what is not allowed to be referred to the courts, like minor infractions. It also defines the roles of SROs, school resource officers, because remember, the federal government that funds SROs didn't do that. And lastly, uses restorative practices as rehabilitating punishments instead of just arresting students. And this had led to 20% more graduations, 8% decline in suspensions, and 67% decline in juvenile court referrals. The fact of the matter is, prevention gets you farther than retaliation. We've seen that the punishments being used, the policies in place, as well as the increase of police in schools doesn't work, and it hasn't worked. It's not even a matter of, it'll start working any day now, because these have been in place for years, and things are just getting worse. Like, yeah... Oh yeah, things get worse before they get better, but when it comes to the safety and the mental health and just, again, the safety of children in schools, I don't think it'll get better any day now is something that you should really bank on. So what can you do? Listening to this video, all 12 of you, reach out to your local school districts with some of the ideas in this video and in the sources linked below. Write to the U.S. Department of Education at 400 Maryland Avenue, Southwest, Washington, D.C., 20202. I'll also put the address in the description as well. If you're not ready or willing to advocate to that degree, talk to your kids. Let them know that it's okay for them to reach out to you or the school counselor or a favorite teacher if they're having a hard time emotionally or even academically. Stop punishing kids for arbitrary bullshit like grades by taking things away with no explanation when you yourself can't even do the fucking work. Like we all remember 2020 and you were all complaining about common core math and this, that, the third. Start understanding that kids are people too and they need to be treated like they matter today instead of counting on them to only build a better tomorrow. The links to my sources will be in the description below as well as EJ Robinson's link to his Spotify Next Thursday, depending on how many Thursdays are left now in the month, I think I have a personal vlog planned, ew, because I'm trying to be more personable on the internet, because I was doing that, and I was like, ew, I hate it here, um, but, you know, whatever, you would do a two for a check, I'm just kidding, but I'm not, but also, yeah, I appreciate you. <laughs> Next month, I will be back on schedule, hopefully, mm, nothing horrible happens, um, every Thursday, uh, between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m., it just depends, and I think I'm talking about prison reform and how corrupt the prison system actually is. I might still do personal vlogs. This month is more of, like, a test to see if I like them or if they're even doable. People don't typically care about what I'm doing unless I'm crying on the internet, uh, and I don't do that anymore. I cry in my shower, so we shall see. The last couple few three-ish minutes, you will be listening to EJ Robinson's song, Blood on My Hands, I believe it's called. At least that's what the file saved as. It was written for Talkmasters, but then we disbanded due to geographical location reasons. And now it just belongs to me. <laughs> so anyway, until next time, bye. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Today I woke up, woke up with blood on my hands. Yeah. I just last night, mama, mama, I killed a man. Today yeah. I woke up, woke up with blood on my blood hands. On I just last night, mama, mama, I, I killed a man. I killed a man. Me. Me. Like, I give a fuck. I, I ain't a no killer, mama. I ain't no cunt, but no if gun. I get cornered, then I give it up. I, 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 I have no gun. I, 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 I had no luck. I, I, All I, I had was my bare hands, they're covered in blood. Black, black. I've been dreaming about suicide ever since. Ever since. I can't get the images out of my head. Yeah, yeah. Today I woke up, woke up with blood on my hands. I guess last night, mama, mama, I killed a man. Today I woke up, woke up with blood on my hands. I guess last night, mama, mama, I killed a man. I was fucking his bitch, and I understand that he was trying to prove something.
nothing, but he did not plan. Got the man he would test this time was his last. First grab, then a gasp. He was gone in a flash. Today I realized that I, I am a beast like a dragon, Loch Ness. But I ain't got no leash. I've been dreaming about suicide ever since. I can't seem to get the images out of my head. I ain't no murderer, but mama, no, I ain't no murderer. But if you niggas get too close, I just might murder ya. Murder ya, my, my, no, I ain't no murderer. But if you niggas get too close, I just might murder ya. I woke up, woke up with blood on my hands. It's last night, mama, mama, oh, I killed a man today. I woke up, woke up with blood on my hands. It's last night, mama, mama, oh, I killed a man. Plays a play to my life. Take a trip into the night If you see, oh if you see The devil has taken over me Ways of hate to my life Take a trip into the night If you see, oh if you see that The devil has taken over me Today I woke up, woke up yes. with blood on my hands. I oh guess last night, mama, mama, oh, I killed a man. Today I woke man. up, woke up with the blood on my hands. Oh I guess last night, mama, mama, oh, I killed a man. Today I woke up, woke up with blood on my hands. I guess last night.